the FCC deals yet another blow to SpaceX Starlink. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, so good. That bergamot. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. Today we're going to talk about the FCC and a ruling that just came down as of yesterday. I want to bring this to your attention because it just... It's upsetting. It is, it's just on its face stupid, but I want to get into it a little bit. I was reading some articles over on Ars Technica, on PC Magazine, a whole bunch of different locations. And uh, I think PC Magazine did a good job at putting it together concisely. So I want to read some of that article to you. Then of course, give you my commentary on it. And then most importantly, down below, let's hear from you. What do you think about all of this? And the big question is, is how will this affect us going forward as Starlink users or possibly someone like yourself that is looking into purchasing Starlink? Is this going to be a negative effect or is this something that's just going to simply take time to iron out? And I wanna get into a little bit of that with you today because I do think that it's important and I feel like some people just don't understand exactly how these three letter agencies work. And we give you a little bit of an underpinning of what goes on and why they rule the way they rule. Anyways, before we get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up, that's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Matter of fact, Friday, we should be live, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Come visit, hang out, chat. <laughs> also, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here. You could click on that, give a dollar or two. That would be awesome, but you don't have to. Don't. <laughs> Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you want more Starlink content, Starlink specific, I have almost 260 videos just for you. Click this little button over here. Just simply check out my Starlink playlist. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, check out the guys over there at Pure VPN. They are awesome. They gave us a promo code, which is J Christina. You'll get 15 additional percent off at checkout. If you can't remember J Christina, that's all right. Go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN and it will automatically or automatically give you that additional 15%. Anyways, let's get right into this article and just have a general discussion on this, right? Very relaxed today. I'm not gonna speed through this, so if you wanna fast forward, you can. I know some people, they start getting like anxiety, you know, when things aren't given to them, like in 15 seconds, like if they're watching a TikTok or something. This is a vlog, all right? Not a newscast, I'm not with CNN or something, right? So we're just hanging out, discussing. Anyways, the article starts out by saying, SpaceX needs regulatory approval to use radio spectrum in the 1.6 gigahertz and 2.0 gigahertz band for its up and coming cellular Starlink system, but the company must first overcome a new bureaucratic hurdle, once again, courtesy of the FCC or the Federal Communications Commission. On Tuesday, the FCC rejected SpaceX's original application to use the radio spectrum on a technicality. What else is new? Instead, the commission is forcing the company to go through formal rulemaking proceedings to decide the matter, which includes soliciting comments from the public. Why do we need comments from the public to decide if SpaceX Starlink can use a specific spectrum? That's like if I was to ask a mechanic about what he thought about a brain surgeon that was going to do brain surgery on me. Why would I ask the mechanic? He doesn't know nothing about brain surgery. He knows about mechanics and cars, right? So you're going to just ask the general public, what do they think about it? It's like semantics, right? It's the same BS when the government will take like 200 acres of trees and decide to cut them all down to build a shopping mall. But 
Before they do it, they put little signs in the ground all around the 200 acres. And on the sign, it says, on this date and this time, your voice can be heard. And then you could log in and like have some type of like meeting or something. It's just ridiculous in its face. It's a bunch of nonsense is what it is. Anyways, I digress. SpaceX's Starlink system is designed to tap the radio spectrum from T-Mobile over the 1.91 through the 1.995 gigahertz bands, allowing it to beam the satellite connectivity to phones. But a year ago, the company also asked for regulatory clearance to use additional radio bands, citing the performance benefits. Okay. If approved, the radio bands would supply increase capacity, reduce latency, and broader service coverage for mobile users across the United States and the world, including those users underserved or unserved by existing networks. This is what SpaceX said at the time when they petitioned for this additional frequency, this initial band. However, the company sought to harness the additional radio spectrum by simply modifying its Starlink license with the FCC. On Tuesday, the commission said SpaceX's application failed to comply with existing policies. That's because the FCC's ruling from over 15 years ago gave rival companies Global Star and Iridium access to the 1.6 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. SpaceX argues that the satellite landscape has changed since then. The company told the FCC it can, quote, use a variety of strategies, including phase array, as well as beam scheduling protocols to share the radio spectrum and coexist with other satellite providers. But even so, the commission concluded, Quote, the proper proceeding would be a new rulemaking to determine whether there is additional availability for another provider in the 1.6 and 2.4 gigahertz bands. And if so, what operating criteria would be appropriate for that system? So before I finish this, I just I want to I say this all the time. And if you're new here, you never heard me say this. Why is it? All right. That the FCC and a lot of three letter organizations vote the way they do, rule the way they do. Why do they make decisions the way they do? Now, if you knew it or not, the FCC is run by three Democrats and two Republicans, right? Three Democrat commissioners, two Republican commissioners, right? So it's very biased. They vote 99% of the time down party lines. That's just simply how it is. They don't vote based on us, right? What is good for you and I? Absolutely not. They vote on party lines. At the time a president is sworn into office, he gets to pick whoever's going to be the chairman of this body. Okay, now they mandate that there can only be three people, three commissioners out of the five for any one specific party. So what ends up happening? This is not rocket science, guys. This is not rocket science. If there is a Democrat in office, there is three Democrats and two Republicans. If there is a Republican in office, there is three Republicans and two Democrats. What does that mean? Whoever is the president whoever the political party of that president is, that is how the FCC rules. If you like it or not, if you knew it or not, they don't rule based on us, on how they can help us. Like SpaceX indicated providing service to the underserved or the unserved, the people in the rural areas and whatnot. No, they don't give a crap about that. They don't care about you. The FCC and many other three-letter regulatory bodies, they only vote on party lines. That is it, all right? Everything else that you see is just basically semantics. It's just a show, right? That's why I always call these people ass clowns because they literally are ass clowns. They're just there. They are just figureheads, right? And they just vote once again on political lines. So I digress a little bit as I always do, but I want to make you aware of this because some people don't know that this is how it works. Once again, sadly, but this is how it works. 
Let's finish this article. The FCC arrived at a similar conclusion with SpaceX's request to use the 2000 to 2020 megahertz and the 2180 through 2200 megahertz bands, which rival company Dish Network currently has sole authority to use. Despite the setback, the FCC on Tuesday also kicked off the regulatory process to revise commission rules in order to let SpaceX use the 1.6 and 2.0 gigahertz spectrum for Starlink. The public will have until April 25th to comment on both proceedings. Yeah, like if it really friggin' matters what the public has to say. It's ridiculous. Once again, what did I say? Do they care about you? Do they care about me? No, it's all just a show. They don't care what the public has to say. They're gonna vote down party lines, period. End of friggin' story. Tuesday's ruling set the stage for another SpaceX regulatory battle. Rival companies will likely try to lobby the FCC to block SpaceX's access to the additional radio spectrum, claiming it threatens to cause radio interference. BS. I'll tell you why in just a second. On the same day, Dish Network, Echo Star, if you didn't know, Dish Network, Echo Star, basically the same company. One is an arm that goes after the retail people, whereas the other, Echo Star, is the arm that actually makes satellites and stuff. All right, it's the same, same people. Anyways, on the same day, Dish Network, Echo Star, issued a filing to the FCC pushing back against SpaceX's attempt to tap the 2.0 gigahertz spectrum. Quote, it is widely established that two widely deployed mobile services cannot share the same frequency band generally and generally and for 2.0 gigahertz bands specifically echo star alleged so it's a bunch of bullshit okay it just simply is now let me try to explain this all right i'm going to try doing it simply Multiple carriers, multiple providers can use the exact same frequency. They have been for many years. Okay, that's number one. Think of it this way. If it is done properly, you're not going to walk on the backs of the heels of your competitor using the exact same frequency. The reason being is very simple. I'll give you an example. SpaceX Starlink, as well as many other ISPs, use what is called Carrier Grade Network Address Translation, or CGNAT, okay? They use this, why? Because they're very cheap. And instead of using IPv6, which they can, but it's expensive to migrate to IPv6, they use IPv4, where the majority, or actually all, of the IP addresses have been already allocated. So there's no more IP addresses. So what do you do? CGNet, carrier grade network address translation on the ISP side. So what does this mean? What does it mean? So if your IP address is 1.1.1.1 and my IP address is 1.1.1.1 and we're on the internet, how does it know where to send the data? I'm glad you asked. It's very simple. So even though we have the exact same IP address, every single packet that is sent out has a small bit at the end. Just think of like one character. It's actually more than that, but a small amount of data at the end of every single packet. And that data tells the ISP, for example, Starlink, where to send the data. Who is the one that initiated the request and where does it go to come back? Very, very simple. So even though we have the exact same IP address, think of it this way. We live at 100 East Main Street, but it is an apartment building with 500 apartments in it. All of us have the exact same address, right? But it, the mail system doesn't have a problem getting mail to us. Why? Because there is a floor number and an apartment number attached to that mail. So everything is going to the same address right? 1.1.1.1. But that little bit of data at the end tells the mail person where to put that package. Very simple. And the same thing holds true here. Even though you're going to use the exact same frequency, all of the data sent through this network is going to also have that bit at the end that will tell it whose data is it? Where does it need to go? Is it Starlink data? Is it Echo Star? Is it Iridium? Whose data is it? Number one, right? And then they can also add to that by taking turns. 
on who sends the data. It's not a big deal. Once again, this kind of stuff has been going on forever in networking, as well as in sending or transmitting through the same band or spectrum. So what they talk about here is just complete nonsense. What they're trying to do is stall, stall, stall. Why is that? Because these companies like HughesNet, Viasat, Echostar, Dish, Iridi all these companies are going out of business. Make believe they're not even there because they're not. If you have stock in them, sell it. Sell it like today. They are out of business. They are gone. So they're fighting to try to stay alive. Remember, Dish Network forever has been raping people using the same geostationary satellites for ages, right? Well, as they saw SpaceX Starlink came on board with their service, they said, you know what? Holy hell, we need to do something. So what they did is they told the FCC is we're going to start using towers, kind of like T-Mobile does and AT&T does, as well as Verizon, Verizon Home, T-Mobile Home, right? Using the cell towers, using 5G to send data as an internet connection, same thing. Dish Network says, oh, we're going to use that spectrum that we haven't used for the last 15 years. We're going to start using it now because they know that those satellites that they have up there are completely useless. If anything, the government might use them, right? Just as a backup, but that's for another video. The bottom line is now they're saying, well, we're going to create our own internet type of service where we're going to now facilitate or provide TV but instead of over that satellite, we're going to do it through a wireless tower, a cell tower. They are grasping for air and they're drowning. So this is what they do. They sick a whole bunch of lawyers and attorneys onto a company like SpaceX Starlink to once again try to stymie, slow things down, drag things through the mud. And as of right now, once again, we do have a Democrat party in office. That means we have three Democrats to two Republicans on the FCC. What does that mean? That no matter how you look at it, the ruling will always come through based on those political lines. Very simple, right? Sad, but simple. Anyways, guys, I hope you've gotten some information here that is of value. If I'm wrong on anything, let me know where I'm wrong. I'm not a freaking genius here. I try giving you all of the information as I get it and as I assimilate it. And I try breaking it down so that it's simplistic. That's always my goal here. Anyways, if you enjoy the content, as always, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and my merchandise, as well as the teas and everything else. Pick something up. Support me and my family. I would really appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.